Okay, now another distribution is called a beta distribution. This is another uh, expansions we are doing. Like gamma with gamma distribution, we broadened our scope of distributions. Like uh, like similarly, we do beta distributions. Beta distributions we are going to denote beta a b. There are two parameters a and b, and this speed P D F is defined like this. And notice that for beta distribution, it is only defined in the positive interval, but restricted to 0 1. Okay. Now, if you make this a and b and same as 1, this suppose now put a and b as same, what you are going to get f of x equals to gamma 2 gamma 1 gamma 1 x 0 and y 0 0. So, what is the value of gamma 2? 1. So, and what is the value of gamma 1? 1. So, this is like a 1 if x is between 0 1 and this is like 0 otherwise. What this distribution corresponds to? Uniform 0 1. So, by putting a and b equals to same to 1, you have recovered uniform distribution. Like that you can choose any distributions you like in this. And again that is what like I have put some special cases here. Uh, the first thing I have put is like let us take this one a b 2 2 and a b 5 5. So, in these two cases I have put both a and b to the same value. If you see that when a b are 2 2 it is like this and if I am increasing the value of a b to 5 this is like a kind of narrowing down. The peak is always at the middle 0.5. And uh, similarly, you can imagine that if I increase a b value to 10, it may be maybe like maybe looking more and more concentrated around uh, that point. Now, the case where a and b are not different, like I have again considered the uh, two symmetry two cases, when a and is 2 and b equals to 10, you can read the value on the screen. Okay, let me write here. So, here okay, now consider this case, uh, this is corresponding to this curve. In this curve, A is 2 and B is 10 and this curve here is the here A is 10 and b is 2. So, notice that when they are similar, sim the a and b values are not the same, some kind of skewness is happening in the peak of this uh, curve. Like when uh, b is large, the peak is mostly towards your left, and uh, when uh, a is large, the peak is towards your right. And when A and B are same, the peak is exactly in the middle. Okay, and as a very special case, when A and B are equals to one, it is like a flat curve; no peak is there, because we just showed that's a uniform in this, right? So again, this is like a generalizing thing. Like from uniform distributions, now we have parameterized, and you are able to capture so many different distributions. And uh, this is often used in Bayesian statistics like uh, I said earlier like if I do not have any prior information I am going to take uniform like everything is equally likely. But if you have initially some prior information that smaller values are going more likely than the larger values what you are going to do you are going to take B as larger than A or A larger than B. b larger than a right like in this case right like here I told you like uh, the ones which are smaller are more likely that is why here b is going to be larger. On the other hand if you have some prior information that 
larger values are going to be more likely then you will put take a a to be larger than b okay next even though we talked about so many different distributions and we talked about their various parameters it actually happens that most of the distributions we have talked so far they can put in a very compact way and they all belong to one special class of distributions called as exponential families okay now let's say uh, let's write our generic uh, probability density function let's say uh, i have been given a distribution which is parametrized by theta and that i am going to express in this format okay now let's try to decipher what i have written here there are two things h function c function w function and ti functions so h is a simply a function here which depends on the point notice that here deliberately i have written given theta so this distribution this pdf is a parameterized this depends on a given theta and now we have to define it for all possible values of x now this is this h function is going to be positive for all x and the parameter for that parameter that c of theta function is a positive value and now this wi here this wi is a function of theta and this is real valued and this when i write it like this this wi can't depend on xi this wi is only function of theta and this, and this last one ti this is again a real valued function but this only depends on theta but not on x if a pdf function parameterized by theta i can write like this this is called exponential family we are not hard coding what is should be h c w i and t i we are just saying that h of x should be positive for all x c of theta should be positive and w i should be just depends on theta not on x and t i should depend just on x and not on theta now you will see that all the distributions that we talked in the discrete case and all the continuous one that we have talked so far gaussian gamma and beta they actually follow fall into exponential family they can all be expressed in this format for some values of hc ti and wi okay so this exponential family that is why pretty handy because it covers large distributions that we have already studied now let's look why is that's the case why is that we are saying that binomial belongs to exponential okay now let's try to see this uh, binomial distributions i am able to write it in the form x distribution associated with the that's the common template of the pdf for exponential distribution so binomial is what n comma p so the parameters in this case theta are n and p okay so now assume that among these two components this one component is known okay so my theta parameter is actually only p okay this is just to simplify things now if you write your pmf we already know what is the pmf of a binomial distribution right this is what is this this is basically like a probability that x equals to x given that your parameter theta is p so what we are basically saying that my random variable takes value x under this parameter p that is n choose x p to the power x 1 minus p n minus x right this is the definition of binomial random variable or this is the probability mass function of your binomial distribution 
And now let's manipulate this. Can I write p power x as e to the power x log p? Nothing changes, right? This I have also written like this. And now this product of two exponentials I have just written as exponential and taken e to the power sum of the exponents. This is also correct, right? This is just a property of expo exponents. Now let us see that I can write it in this form that I wished. What was that? That is uh, h of x c of theta then e x p my i equals to 1 2 let us how what was the index we use i and then we said w i of it was theta right theta and t i of x. Let us say this can be represented as yeah, we said k let us say this can be represented as in this format. Okay, now let us say my parameter theta is p. Now first uh, decide so exponential so this exponential we will map it to this exponential terms within but now first let us the this part I have to map it to the factors multiplying the exponential. So h of h of x c of theta is simply n choose x but here n is known only un, only thing x this. So then in that case I will choose h of x equals to simply this n choose x and this is true for x 0 1 to n this being a binomial I will choose x to 1 0 1 to up to n and 0 otherwise and uh, this requirement that my h of x has to be greater than or equals to 0 now that is fulfilled. This guy is positive. Now for c of theta this c of theta has to depend only on theta. Now here there is nothing so I will just take c of theta to 1 okay. and uh, this is also positive quantity that requirement c of theta is positive is also 1. Now let us see that now let us focus on the terms inside exponential. I know that w1 so each of these wi's has to depend only on theta. What I will do is for that these things I am going to now define w1 theta to be log p and w2 theta to be log 1 minus p. And now both w1 and w2 depends only on the parameter p they are not dependent on x. And now to define t1 x, t1 x I will take as this x and t2 x I will take it as this n minus x. Now this only depends on x and not on the parameter. Notice that n is a parameter but we are assumed it to be fixed. So the parameter is only p and this does not depend on this p. Now have I put it in the format that I want and here k is 2 because I am adding only two terms in the exponent. Now that is why I have now put this probability mass function as h of x c of theta in this form. This is the required form for it to be called exponential family. So that was for the discrete case. Let us now look into one continuous case. So for this we will take Gaussian. So Gaussian is going to be parameterized by two values here mu and sigma square. So theta here is that is what like this f x given theta and this theta is mu and sigma square here that is what you have written. We know that its pdf is like this. Now let us see this could be expressed in the exponential family. So to do that we have first I have simplified this exponent inside I have expanded the square you will get this 
Okay. Okay. Now let's see. This term here depends on sigma square, which is my parameter. So I will take this c of theta. Okay. Now one more thing I have done. When I expanded this, this square mu square two sigma square is there. So I have also pulled out this. So this entire thing here it depends only on the parameter mu and sigma square and not on x. So that's what I am going to take c of theta to be this entire quantity, this quantity, and I will simply define h of x to be one for all x. Okay. So notice that when I pulled out this, this did not depend on x, but the other terms, this and this, this term depends both on x and sigma square, and this depends on x and parameters. So what all the para, wherever the things both depend on x as well as the parameter, I kept it inside my exponential, and where it only depends on the parameter, I have pulled out out. And this helped in the simplification. And now, if you now look into this part, I can take mu and theta to be this one by sigma square here, and mu to theta to be mu by sigma square part this portion here, and take t one x to be minus x square, and t two x to be x. This portion x. Now, if you notice that with this definition, I am now able to write f of x given theta is exactly like this. Again, for k equals to two, this is what is the definition of exponential family. So that's why, like we have again verified that the Gaussian is also belongs to exponential family. Now, quickly check whether. This uh, gamma function we just discussed today is also belongs to exponential family. Okay, now we said gamma is parameterized by alpha and lambda, and this is its uh, function when x is greater than or equals to zero, right? And when x is less than zero, we also have to handle the case where it is zero by appropriately defining. Now, what I have done here, this first thing we have kept it same, but now x to the power alpha minus one I have rewritten as e to the power alpha minus one log x. Can I do this? This is the property of exponents and log that I have used, and e to the power lambda x I have written. And now let's see if I can come up with h function, c function, t i function, and w i function as required in my exponential family. Okay, so one can define c of theta to be alpha to the power lambda to the power alpha, gamma alpha, h of x equals to one. Now w one of Theta to be alpha minus one, w two to be minus alpha. So here w function only depends on your parameters, and t one x can you take as log x, and t two x you can take it as simply x. Now if you could expand, expand that. Now this is this f of x given theta, where theta is alpha lambda. You are able to write it like this. So this is again exponential family. Now an exercise for you. Check if beta a b is belongs to exponential family for all. A B. Okay, and see that in particular, check if
if uniform 0 1 belongs to exponential family okay so please uh, check this don't uh, skip it uh, 